Hi, I'm Dr. R.J. Burr, and I don't want to say this, but I've got anterior pelvic tilt. I don't know how much more time I have. Anterior pelvic tilt is not a disease, it's a position. You may have pain with it, you may have heard the term being thrown around, but it's not a pathology. It is a position, and it's a position of tension, and you may be feeling that tension, but the good news is we can change it. If you like this video, please give us a subscribe uh, and hit the little bell button for YouTube on Instagram. Give us a follow, double tap the screen for a like. And please, uh, if you have any suggestions for future content, we want to know what you want to see and we'll be glad to make it. We appreciate the support. Reach! Anterior pelvic tilt is especially, essentially describes a position, which I think a better term for it is J-Lo booty. Right, so an anterior pelvic tilt, what that means is that your pelvis is down here, your rib cage is up here, and ideally in a neutral position, we're sort of in a connected position. So I have a line here and a line here, I'm connected. Anterior pelvic tilt is like this. So it's sometimes called an open scissor position. So my rib cage is going this way, my pelvis line is going this way. Well, what happens as a result, I have a lot of tension in my low back. And I may be walking around waddling my butt like this. Right, so a lot, some people maintain this position naturally through whatever reason, this is just a position they hold. But the problem with this over time that can happen is that the back muscles can get really tired and sore from doing this. So you can check this on yourself simply by taking your fingers and running across your back. If in your back those muscles feel like steel pipes or steel cables and it feels as you run your fingers over them, you feel a big pipe and then it dips into like a ravine where your spine is and then you go over it again and you have that sort of wave through there and you can feel that tension, you're probably stuck into this position. But it doesn't mean you have anterior pelvic tilt like you're gonna like kick the can in a few months, right? We can change this. So a few things we can do is, well one, just be mindful. Yes, there's a lot of stretches and exercise and strengthening you could do, but first and foremost, we have to understand what the position is and how to change it. So if we're in this position, what we first need to do is go into the opposite, called a posterior pelvic tilt, or I like to call a plumber butt. So we wanna go more into this position, not here like a full plumber butt, not a full J-Lo booty, but right in between, which is neutral. So how can we find that? Well, first we can go into a golf posture, like a, like a leaning posture like this. We can simply cycle through the two. We can go through J-Lo booty and then go to plumber butt, J-Lo booty, plumber butt, and then find where your in-between is. At that point, that is your neutral. It's gonna be different for everyone. You just find that in between. What you'll notice in that position too is that those back muscles won't be nearly as taut. You know, they'll be on because you're leaning over, but they're not gonna be like steel rods. Now, the idea is that, okay, if we stand up tall and we have this position here, well, how do we change that standing not in a golf posture? Well, the idea is that that neutral that we had leaning over, this gives us room to move our pelvis, right? The hard part is when we're standing up straight, for some people it's hard to tuck their pelvis under because their hips, or their back is so tight, they can't get that lifting or that belt buckle toward the nose. They just don't have the mobility for it. So when you're here, that helps you first find it. Then you can start working toward, well, when I'm standing here, can I get this little tuck under? because the, ideally when you're standing up tall and going about your day, you should be able to tuck under a little bit and reduce that tone in your back, those steel rods I was talking about before. However, some people are stuck here standing and doing this is hard. So we're gonna go through what are a couple things you can do or exercises to help you be able to get this awareness of tucking your pelvis or bringing your belt buckle toward the nose, okay? So, we went through that golf posture. So next, if, if doing this is troubling for you or you're shaking or it just feels awkward, like you're moving your body up and down and you're not tilting the pelvis, what we can do is try it seated. So what we'll do here is sit down and then sit in an upright position. And simply what you'll do is, so you can see my waistline here. Can you see it, Mitch? Yep. Okay. We're gonna tilt the pelvis forward and back. You know what, let me just tuck this in. All right, so we'll sit in our just general position. Then what we'll do is roll forward onto our sit bones. So that's gonna be the anterior pelvic tilt or J-Lo booty. So I'm gonna roll forward, arch my back, and I'm on my sit bones. Then I'm gonna roll my pelvis backward or plumber butt onto my tailbone. I'm gonna roll forward and roll back. 
roll forward, and roll back. You'll notice when you roll forward, steel rods. When you rotate back, nice and flat and relaxed. Forward and back. And so you put your hands there to get this feel while you're doing it. And then once you have that idea of the full J-Lo, full plumber, and you feel those end ranges, find your center that's right in between. So I'm gonna go to that. You should feel those back muscles. They may be on, but they're relaxed. They're not like steel pipes. Right now I have found my neutral. This is where ideally where I wanna be. So now I get this feeling of this tilting here. So what we can do is next is stand back up and see if we can do that same thing here, okay? If we still cannot and it's a problem, we can start to train this in an exercise. And we'll do that next. So this requires some thought and some mindfulness. It's just not willy nilly, just plow through it. Um, you gotta think about your positioning. So I'll, I'll walk you through it and then take your time with it. So we're gonna lie down face down and you can just rest your forehead and your fingertips okay if you are in this anterior pelvic tilt position where your butt's way up we want to get rid of that so we're going to do more of that plumber butt or pull the belt buckle toward the nose to flatten your back out okay now what you want to make sure to do is you're not squeezing your ass for dear life trying to do this right no one's um i shouldn't say it i'm not going there you don't want to squeeze your ass for your butt for dear life um, you can start that way, but then once you're in position, relax the butt. So what you want to do is actually think about pulling your belt buckle toward the nose. It's like using your abs to lift as opposed to squeezing your butt to lift. Okay? So I'm going to get myself in this position. Just doing this alone is hard for people, so work at it. So you can see I'm in an arch. I'm going to slowly flatten out. Once I have that, I'm just going to hold and breathe. I'm going to focus on breathing through my abdomen. And when you breathe in, you should feel your spine move up toward the ceiling. And when you breathe out, your back sinks down and you're maintaining this position. Okay. Now what we're going to do is work on our ability to maintain this with movement. We're going to do heel to butt. And what typically happens when you just move your heel to butt, your back arches, right? Your back arches. Why is because when you bend your knee, it pulls the quad, the quads attached to your pelvis, it pulls the pelvis into that anterior tilt. So if you're tight in the hips, this is going to be tough for you and your back is going to arch like crazy. So what we're trying to do is mobilize the hips and work out of this. So by tucking under and then slowly paying attention to when I bring my heel toward my butt, where am I feeling tension? Where am I feeling tightness? And now as I keep going here, I'm holding my position and now I feel that I'm tight in the quads and my quads are stopping me from going any further. Now I can definitely cheat this, but I don't want to cheat by arching my back. So I want to go as far as I can go without cheating in my back. Some other cheats that people will do is that they will tilt to the side. We don't want that. Or they'll do something like shifting, like hiking their hip or sticking one hip out. We want to keep that back position while we bring the heel to the butt and then back and alternate sides. Maintain this as best as possible while breathing. Good. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're building that awareness of keeping that neutral spine position, the rib cage, the pelvis, while moving our legs. And what this will do with some time and practice It'll give you more awareness then of getting into this position, standing up. Why? Because we were lying down in this position and we we're essentially doing this, mobilizing the quads and the hips, which is opening up our ability then to be able to tuck under while standing up. To recap, anterior pelvic tilt is not a disease, it's a position. So don't go around saying like, oh, well, I can't do that because I have anterior pelvic tilt. Well, we can change it. So by using these drill, this drill here, we can first be aware of our position and then work on changing it to directly reduce that tone or that tension you have in your back because of that tilt. Right? Anterior pelvic tilt is no different than saying I have bent finger problem, right? Bent finger problem, I have tension in my finger because I'm holding it back and it hurts. Just like if you crank it on your back muscles here, it's going to hurt after a while. But you know what I can do about bent finger disease or bent finger syndrome? I can unbend my finger, it doesn't hurt anymore. I can unbend my back from anterior pelvic tilt into more neutral and I'll reduce some of that tension in my low back.